Hello, and welcome to my review of Paradise PD. I give this film 2 out of 10. Not even comparing it to anything like my funny little eh, X out of 10 something. It's just not good, friends. My quick thoughts, it tries too hard to be edgy. It tries too hard to be hardcore, ridiculous, you know, shock you, stuff like that. This 10 episode show was created by Roger Black and Waco, Waco O'Gwin. Uh, they both wrote for Brinkleberry, and it's kind of a, I guess, a continuation of their work, but not really. I don't think they're connected to any way. I've never watched Brinkleberry. It stars Sarah Chalk. Uh, she plays Beth from Rick and Morty. David Herman from Disenchantment, Bob's Burgers, OK Go, Let's Be Heroes, Adventure Time, the list goes on. Tom Kinney, or SpongeBob SquarePants as we all know him. And this only order for 10 episodes as of right now, which is good because I don't like it. This show tries so hard to be hardcore. It goes where shows shouldn't go as often as it does. It's 10 episodes. Let's, let's start with that. It's 10 episodes and everything I'm about to say happens in those 10 episodes and they're only 30 minutes each, give or take. Uh, here's a list of everything that they do wrong that they go hard into in those small amount of episodes and time frame. Racism, anti-Semitism, anti-religion, uh, car sex, literally having to do bang a car, dolphin human sex, dog orgies, old man balls, old man dicks, old lady vagina, old lady boobs, old lady mustache vagina, sexual assault, rape, incest, the list goes on and that's in 10 episodes yeah you could say South Park or Family Guy or I don't know maybe Archer all of those shows deal with maybe a racism anti-semitism anti-religion or like some form of bestiality maybe but it's a very quick quick trope a quick little either cutscene a cutaway or something that's not of importance that is lingers on it lingers on it doesn't do that in those shows it does in this show there's dolphin sex involvement where there's inbreeding and just things that shouldn't exist Futurama had mutants but it's because of all of like the things that happened in their universe their world that makes sense they're not actually like Leela's parents for instance from Futurama one of her parents has tentacles instead of arms, but it's because of genetic mutation. It doesn't mean that, you know, Leela's mother's parents were one octopus and one human. That That's not how it is. But it is in this show. It exists, and we're supposed to believe it. Even though this show's kind of grounded reality, but then it's not. Like, there's a talking car like Kit from, you know, like David Hasselhoff's car from Knight Rider. But it's a girl, and her name's Carla, of course. And she gets along with her main character, literally, like multiple times. They're dating, they have a relationship, and it's supposed we're supposed to believe it. And there's a lot of incest and breeding. It just, it just I, I could complain about it for a while. I cannot think of another show that sends its characters through this kind of gutter, like the entire season. I can't think of one. Usually, I can think of an audience that would enjoy this type of work or this type of entertainment I really don't think so because if you're vaguely interested in the show just go watch Rick and Morty again or maybe Family Guy or shoot if you wanted to keep on with the Netflix theme of you know their own shows because this is a Netflix original series go watch F is for Family it has a lot more character development and there's gags that you're like hope oh, they just did that but it's two seconds it's done and gone and doesn't get brought up multiple times you know, um, and that's like the main problem I have with the show, that if they stick with something, they stick with it, and it doesn't end, and the imagery is just... <sighs> My problem with the show isn't just that it's crude, and I don't think a lot of its jokes hit well, but also lies in the fact there is no character development. Throughout the show, many characters show flaws or have distinct problems about them and how they react to society and things like that, or each other, and there's no lessons to be learned. Like, even if it's a ridiculous lesson. Like, a family guy, at the end of the show, they even make fun of it some of the times that they'll all be sitting on the couch and be like, oh, you know, this thing happened, and I guess now I know not to do that, even though they might do it in future seasons, 
at least for the episode, there's a concrete thing to be learned, kind of like South Park as well. Most shows have that thing, but this show, this show, Paradise PD, does not have that, and I think it suffers a lot from it. And there's a last minute twist in the tenth episode that I guess minor spoilers, real quick. This character has been shown no sign, no signs of wanting to switch sides to the evil side because we're talking about police department and this character switches to the drug dealers which is kind of like the main antagonist for the film but not really not film but tv show but they're not really main antagonist because each episode has its different antagonist kind of and some episodes don't even have an antagonist it's just situations that their main characters have to get out of and then at the end of the season a cop switches sides and is like haha i am with i am the drug dealer of like this drug that keeps on going around town that was kind of the main plot but isn't is and isn't sometimes you're like okay cool that I mean there's no way I, you could realize it as a person there's no way you could have guessed it it's just a twist there just to be there at the end of the episode to get you to watch the next 10 episodes which is not because they haven't renewed it yet and i hope they don't because <sighs> i don't like it i get it though some people might like it some people might find it funny that you know tom kenny is doing a very adultish cartoon they're like haha i can hear spongebob a little bit or you know some, his little voice maybe not spongebob voice but one of his characters voice from the show spongebob maybe that's funny maybe you like best character from rick and morty you want to support the actress that does this show you know something like that i get it but for the most part i don't think it's worth your t worth your time oh no the show has some gags that are ridiculous in nature and are kind of funny um it has moments, you know, a movie like The Happy Time Murders, Sausage Party, or a TV show like Rick and Morty, where it could exist in a medium, and it could exist in a funny way. It just doesn't. It doesn't live up to those movies, even though I didn't review Happy Time Murders well. <coughs> it still had some things that, if it were to be worked on, it could have been, it could have been grander, it could have been better. But this show, you have so much to work on to make it better. To the point where I'd give it above a five. You know, it's at a two because I like some of the voice actors, others I don't, and there's some funny gags. But you know, if like for instance, one of the characters is a drug loving one and like likes to get drunk, get high, and stuff like that. You know, every episode he makes a joke like, "Oh yeah, oh sorry, I'm high on drugs," and that that's like the joke, like "Haha, he's on drugs." But he's on it every t every episode of the ten episode series. So where's the joke in that? You know, that'd be like, or every character they have, the violent, uh, there's a violent character in every episode that she makes a violent joke. Haha, ha, funny, I got it the first time. The fat guy in the show has funny fat guy scenes about getting food. You, you're beating a dead horse, horse to death. You are beating a dead horse to death. Again, like, it's dead already, stop beating it. You have other jokes, write something else. We all get that this character that is defined as like a drug loving character <coughs> or as a violent character or a character likes to yell we get that you don't have to keep on doing it every episode to make it funny we already get that i already understand that i know that i comprehend it you know work on something else you you're smart people on this shit set shit you're smart people on the set work with it go somewhere else with this the show do something with it you know, if season two is released, I will watch it just to give it another shot. But if season two is like season one, then I, I won't keep on touching Paradise PD. You know, I really hope Disenchantment, another Netflix original animated show created by Matt Goring, I hope that succeeds. That could be a flagship for Netflix in terms of their own their own stuff, because that's what Netflix wants to do is their own, their own content, really. At the very end of the day, it's going to be all their own content. I don't want Paradise PD to be one of those. I think that's only going to hurt. It doesn't do anything. It's a waste of resources. Bring Tom Kenny into Disenchantment. That'd be funny. Make him a talking sponge. I know that probably might give them a legal trouble, but it'd be funny. You know, none of the characters in here make jokes about something else. And maybe that, that's, you know, me enjoying moments in Family Guy where, you know, Seth Green character Chris gets made fun of or defends, you know, Seth Green in real life that's that's funny that's in, intuitive tom kenny's character never gets a jab at his old life or his old casting details stuff like that that's ballsy that's ballsier than you just 
having having gay and bisexual dog humping orgy party where all of them die you know making a joke about spongebob would be funnier in my def in my in my head but that's just me in the end this is two out of ten dogs humping each other i don't even care it's something i'm not going to recommend to anyone i know i'm just going to say it's bad don't watch it bro but as always my name is clark addison i review entertainment because i care and i'll see you guys in the next one Oh. Uh.